The Haas F1 team completely revolutionised Formula 1 when they appeared in the sport as a completely new organisation. Their approach to car development and design was not only controversial, but it changed the way almost all of the midfield teams now operate. Craig, this has been something that has really just upset the Apple car and completely changed Formula One, almost taking it back to the aluminium chassis, Cosworth powered Hewland gearbox kit car era of the 1970s, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, Enzo Ferrari seeing this now will call them a garageista, <laughs> even though they're running Ferrari engines. And the, the, the rules have been in the rule book for quite some time. So this didn't come you know, completely out of the blue. It was always an opportunity for someone to have. And it's all under a set of rules, which are known as listed parts. Now, this is what you have to make in order to be re regarded as a constructor in Formula One. Whether you actually make them, the IP, the design needs to be your responsibility. You can't buy certain parts in. And we've summarized here with another one of my drawings of just the key bits that you have to make as a constructor and core to that is your your monocoque your chassis you may call it uh, so you have to design that and have that built for you um, then the rules start to get a little bit uh, strange you have to make your front and rear crash structure so that's the nose and the little bit that holds the tail light on at the back of the car then you have to make your bodywork and this is regarded as all the exterior bodywork but does also strangely include radiators which is an odd addition and probably goes back to the old days, but it, it's there. I've not drawn them here because we all know what a radiator looks like. So that really is the minimum you have to make. After that, you can buy in from any choice of partner the rest of the car. Now, the radiators are included because they're considered, and this is the phrase they use in Formula One, wetted surfaces. So that means it's something where the air touches the car, the air flowing over the car as it's driving around the track, so the front wing, the roll hoop, the bodywork, anything that is touched by that air is considered a wetted surface, therefore has to be at least designed by the team, or at least on behalf of the team. Exactly. And now you can see here some of the parts that you've got the front wing, the monocoque, the bodywork and the rear impact structure and rear wing. Those are all wetted surface parts. They're all stuff the team have to have that's bespoke to them. The reason I'm not saying that the Haas F1 team builds these parts is that the Haas F1 team doesn't actually build these parts. The monocoque and most of the manufacturing of the bodywork actually is done by Delara, the Italian race car constructor that makes every single Indy car on the grid, all of the Formula 2 and Formula 3 car, they race in sports cars, and I think it's possibly the most successful racing car constructor of all time, at least in the major international races. There may be some American stock car makers who've won more races, but I'm not sure. But Delara have won just about everything there is to, to win. But in Formula One, they've never had great success. But Haas has actually been the most successful Dallara F1 car under the Dallara name mm -hmm. ever built. And, and the VF21 is not really an exception to that. It's a, it is Dallara's best effort, but they are struggling this season a little bit for reasons we've just heard. But it doesn't mean that Haas don't actually build anything of the car themselves. Haas is a famous machine tool company, and you've probably used machinery and sat in cars or planes with bits that are made on a Haas machine tool. That's why mm -hmm. the, the, the team is in Formula One to advertise that product. And they actually make quite a lot of the wishbone mountings, a lot of the aerodynamic model parts. And those are all made at the Haas CNC racing team in North Carolina, next door to the Haas NASCAR team, which still races. So I think, and they are still very active, not just in Formula One, but also in NASCAR. And I think that's unique pretty much in the history of Formula One to have a, a team competing in both NASCAR Cup and Formula One at the same time. And it is yeah. the same organisation doing it. So that's the listed parts. Then there's the things they can buy in. Now, there's some bits and pieces that all of the teams are on, like the Pirelli tyres. Uh, you buy your wheels and your brakes from, you know, just a limited number of manufacturers. But for Haas, they've partnered with Ferrari. They spoke to other, other teams at the time and they get everything else and this is just a sample so some of the stuff that they get will be the front suspension they get the steering they get the uh, when we talk about the suspension we're talking about the uh, wishbones and all the springs and the dampers the upright and the axles everything on that end apart from the brake ducts which is still a wetted surface as you say is part of Haas's responsibility it even goes all the way back up the steering column and they use the Ferrari steering wheel they use the Ferrari pedals uh, for example 
example, they're using the Ferrari fuel cell. So when you think about aspects like this, Ferrari will give them the, the, the CAD geometry of these parts, and that kind of defines the shape of where they sit. So they will run something very close to Ferrari suspension geometry, something very close to Ferrari structure around the fuel tank area. Then, of course, you get the Ferrari power unit, and they take both the power unit and the gearbox, as most of their partners do. And that is a, basically the back half of the car. In addition, the rear suspension, exactly the same as we saw before, with the inclusion of the, the rear drive shaft. And then all the stuff that connects this up, so all the electronics, all the hydraulics and those control systems, all bought in from Ferrari and it basically you get the CAD data, you get the finished parts and they then need to design a car to join those dots together. Yeah, essentially, because the regulations say that Haas cannot receive the full CAD model of this year's Ferrari, mm -hmm. they get the CAD model of this year's Ferrari with the bits they're not allowed removed. So, it, so there's no bodywork in it, there's no monocoque in it, but all of these other bits that sort of build up the bigger picture all in the model. So then Haas has to essentially play join the dots and design a car around it, which is why there are some differences between the Haas and the Ferrari. It's not just a white, red, white and blue Ferrari. It is mm -hmm. their own design, even though it is made in Italy. There are some interesting things. So the brakes you mentioned. So the Haas uses Brembo brakes from, mm -hmm. again, from Italy, but they buy them not from Brembo, but from Ferrari. And then Ferrari yeah. resell those brakes on to the Haas team. So they are very much like a customer team of Ferrari, but they still have to do the minimum amount. And it does take us right back to that kit car era. And I mm -hmm. think that's something, perhaps Formula One lost something with that approach. It's less of a constructor sport, a pure constructor sport, but I think it also gained something that was really important, which is a new team. Mm -hmm. And since Haas have taken this approach, a lot of other teams have actually started to do the same. So we've seen Alpha Tauri now going down the same path with Red Bull. So pretty much taking almost the same number of components from the Red Bull that has to take from Ferrari. Not quite as extreme, but not far off. Aston Martin, similar arrangement, controversially so, with, with the Mercedes team, the works Mercedes team. And so that is beginning to become more of a factor. And there's lots of talk of perhaps a new team or one of the other existing teams partnering up with the Alpine team to be a Renault B team. And they're using a lot of those parts coming over from the French manufacturer. So, so what Haas have really done is completely changed the face of Formula One. Has it been changed for the better? Well, I think it probably has. And I'd like to see more teams like Haas on the grid going forwards.